good morning and welcome to our DMAC Business Spotlight event. Thank you all for being here. My name is Jill Hoyk. I work a part of the work-based learning team uh, here at DMAC and I will be your host today. But today we are very excited to learn a little bit more about Daimler Trucks North America. And our hope really with these events are that they're linking your education um, and your career interests uh, to businesses and professionals right here in central Iowa. And so today we are excited to learn a little bit more about Daimler Truck. Um, and we have with us uh, today as our guest host, Todd Pierce. Uh, Todd is the site manager uh, for Daimler Parts Distribution Center here in Des Moines. So thank you for being here, Todd. Um, and we're just gonna learn a little bit more about who Daimler Truck is, uh, what they do, um, a little bit more about career opportunities um, all over the world and even locally too as well. Um, but for those of you who are joining in live today, uh, thank you for being here. And throughout the presentation, if you do have any questions, you can uh, leave them in the chat and I will get those over to Todd. Or you can certainly kindly unmute yourself and ask that way too. Um, but without further ado, I will hand it on over to you, Todd. Thank you again for being here. Great. Thanks, Jill. All right, uh, so I uh, appreciate everyone taking some time to, uh, to learn about the company I work for. It's uh, Daimler Truck North America, as Jill said. Um, and as she said, also, I, I manage the parts distribution center here and it's actually located in Grimes. Um, we opened in 2017, uh, November of 2017. Um, and it was kind of part of a, um, a remapping of our distribution footprint um, to open the, the, the building here in Grimes. Um, it actually replaced a, a distribution center that was in Chicago. So it got us a little bit closer to our customer base. And, um, you know, it, it's a great opportunity for, for uh, local employment, obviously. But um, I'll start off here with, I've got a little PowerPoint and uh, we'll start off with a video. Um, so please bear with me. Hopefully everything works here. We don't build trucks. We don't make engines, don't make transmissions, don't develop technology, and we don't manufacture buses or chassis or parts. We create possibility and we create opportunity. We stock shelves build bridges, hang cable, pave roads, move people, haul logs, hogs, pipe, grain, bricks, dirt, cattle, milk, fuel, and anything made, grown, bought, or sold. We fuel economies and imagination. We inspire the next generation of teachers and doctors, of parents and children, of explorers and dreamers. And we protect the next generation of teachers, doctors, parents, children, explorers, and dreamers. We build futures and communities. We support towns, support businesses, support families and individuals. We support dreams, hopes, aspirations, wants, desires, big and small. We've been doing it for 80 years in the communities where we build and where we live. Serving hundreds of millions of people in North America and making lives better for the hundreds of thousands we, our dealers, our suppliers, and our customers employ. Helping keep people healthy, helping keep them housed, and helping them stay secure. We create tomorrow. A tomorrow that's cleaner, that's healthier, that's safer and smarter, a tomorrow we all want to see, a tomorrow we all want our children and their children to see. Without us, the world would be a much different place. Because we don't build trucks. We move the world. Okay, so 
can actually shut them down. Okay. Uh, all right. There's that. Uh, can you see the screen now? Okay. Perfect. All right. So um, it, the video there um, kind of recapped a little bit about what we do. I know it started off by saying that we don't manufacture trucks or buses, but that's what we do. We uh, we manufacture trucks and buses. Um, the uh, the brands that that we represent are Freightliner, Western Star, Thomas Built Bus. Um, you can see here on the slide. Um, we were a part of the uh, the the partnership was with Mercedes Benz. So back back when Daimler was formed 125 years ago, it was uh, Gottlieb Daimler and uh, um, I can't think of his first name. Gottlieb Daimler and uh, Mark Benz. I think it was his name, Mark. So anyway, uh, we we started manufacturing trucks back then. That was actually when we started the uh, the process. Um, now we are a company that employs over 100,000 people at over 40 locations around the world. Um, you know, I, I mentioned uh, Barat, there's Barat Benz Freightliner, Fuso, Mercedes. Um, those are some of the brands that we represent. Um, before I started with Daimler in 2017, I, I wasn't that familiar with the company. Um, and that's, I think, a, one of the main reasons I wanted to, uh, to be able to come and talk to the class and to talk to the group is to kind of share who Daimler is. Um, I wasn't aware that it was a company of this size. Um, the, the, the connection I had with Daimler was um, a, the partnership that it had with Chrysler back in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s. Um, and in fact, when we, when we were doing interviews, we get that a lot. Um, Daimler Chrysler um, is, is what they refer to, but um, we actually haven't been part of Chrysler since um, like 2008. All right, so we'll go to the next slide. So the Location here in Grimes, this is a picture of the distribution center, kind of a panoramic picture. Um, we opened, like I said, in 2017, the building's about 237,000 square feet. We run three shifts. Um, our first shift runs from 5 a.m. to 1.30. Mid shift is uh, 8.30 to 5.30, and then second shift is uh, 2.30 to 11. Um, so this is, this is a slide that just talks about the opportunity here locally, but it also kind of, I guess, alludes to what else is out there. Um, so right now, full and part-time positions in the distribution center, you know, pay 18 dollars an hour um, if you work after 11 o'clock. Um, so uh, that second shift time frame, there's an extra two fifty dollars an hour that goes with that. So there's an opportunity to, to earn $21 an hour um, for full-time employees. You start with four weeks of paid vacation. Our 401k match is up to 8%. Um, 40 hours of sick time per year. We have tuition assistance and eight paid holidays per year. So the the, the thing that I've found with Daimler is that uh, they value uh, work-life balance. And, and that's something that I think is, is really important to remember um, when, you're, when you're out searching for a job. Um, pay is one thing, but the uh, benefits and perks that go along with, with that job are, are something that really need to be considered, especially if you're looking for long-term employment. Um, our goal here is to say, if a person comes and works in the distribution center, they can have a successful career. We have we have pretty significant pay increases that come every every year uh, for people that are meeting expectations. So the opportunity there, I think, is is really really um, it's really really nice. Um, the other part of that, where it says currently 195 open positions throughout the U.S., those are various types of positions. So as a company this size. Um, we employ IT, we employ finance. I mean, pretty much everything that I'm sure you can you can um, uh, learn going through DMAC or any other program. The, these uh, these opportunities are are um, are out there and they're available. Um, another thing that I guess is I think is important is we've we've had good success with people working part time that were students. So we really encourage people to continue their education. Um, whether it's and, and whether they stay with us or not, we will still uh, honor the tuition reimbursement. But um, for part-time employees, there isn't tuition reimbursement. But again, it's it's a good pay rate, and uh, the opportunity right now is we're we're actually looking at at all shifts. So in the past, we just we would traditionally hire part-time employees for second shift. But with um, with the labor market and with uh, the need that is out there, uh, we're actually opening that up to to all shifts. 
um, which again, is just an opportunity for people to kind of get their foot in the door, maybe make some extra money and still uh, go, to, go to school full time. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's my last slide. So. Um, Can you yeah. talk a little bit about um, at the distribution center, can you talk about a day to day, like what they do? Obviously, um, I'm assuming the parts come to you and then you distribute them out, right? You guys aren't manufacturing the parts in your in your plant, right? In Des Moines, you get them and then where are you sending them to? And do you have like customer service representatives that um, speak with different um, uh you know, what is the day-to-day, -day, I guess, of uh, somebody that works and what's like their career title? Like, what do you call them? And I guess all of the opportunities, um, is it all just distribution or are there other um, other positions too at the Grimes facility? That's a really great question. Um, and the, the answer to that right now, we're hiring for um, basically warehouse labor. Um, it, but we also have office positions here within the facility. Uh, we have receiving and shipping coordinators that work in the uh, office area. We have a, an office lead that works, um, again, in the office, mainly handles HR responsibilities and, and paperwork, um, also scheduling and paying vendors. Um, but the, the positions here, um, we service a footprint of approximately 500 miles radius from, from this facility. Um, the dealership network is about 300 dealers uh, in the network right now that we deliver to on a daily basis. <clears throat> um, the concept for us, like I mentioned, moving from Chicago to Grimes to get closer to the customer, basically we're guaranteeing the customer that they place their orders by 4 p.m. They will have their parts the next day, provided they're in stock. Um, so we have out of these 300 dealerships approximately within this radius, we have 12 routes that depart every night. Uh, we have cutoff times for each of those routes to make sure that they make it to their dealerships every night. Um, barring weather, like we've had here recently, we've had pretty pretty rough weather, um, especially when you get out to like Colorado and in that area, um, we've struggled. But um, yeah, the guarantee is that we'll have those dealers parts to them the next day, which is really kind of, to me, what differentiates us from maybe the other big truck manufacturers that are out there. Um, at the end of the day, these trucks are going to break down when you put a million miles on them. So that's that's where our parts distribution network really kind of fills the gap to make sure that those trucks are back on the road as quickly as possible. Because downtime for for our dealers or for our uh, owner operators and, and our fleets, um, that's money. That costs a lot of money and it costs a lot of time. And especially with the with the supply strain, supply chain constraints that we're seeing right now. Um, downtime is even more, um, it's more of an expense and more challenging. So um, then across the US, like I mentioned, there's 195 positions. Those again, could be financial experts. Um, they could be people like controlling uh, our, our financial controllers. Um, we have district part managers that are responsible for certain districts within the US. Uh, they manage a, a group of dealerships. Um, depending on the size of the dealership, they may have one or two or maybe just one if it's a really large customer. Um, we also have um, uh, some district part managers. We have uh, material planners. We have uh, material controllers. I mean, there, there's a number of positions throughout the supply chain that, that uh, Daimler employs from, from the point of the parts being manufactured in our plants in Cleveland and in Mount Holly. Um, those parts are, are manufactured and built here in the U.S. and they get shipped to us. We, we send those out and distribute them out to the dealer network. And so for having, um, for having the, um, how does someone come into a position? I know you said they need to be 18, but then um, do they have to have any sort of um, prior knowledge or um, can they just come in and you kind of teach them on the job? And, um, you know, especially since there is time constraints, I mean, hopefully they would um, like, do they get like a sheet of paper and then they have to go and fulfill the order and get it on the right bus? Can you just walk me through that? How, um, how that all works? Sure. So the, uh, the orders, are, they come into the system throughout the day. Um, as they kind of compile up that four o'clock time frame that I told you, that's kind of our cutoff time for orders. So, um, as those orders build up in the system, 
uh, we, we let them build and then we'll we'll drop the release these orders uh, the, like basically the route that needs to go. So route one obviously is our first route that needs to get shipped. So we'll drop all the orders for route one into the system and the employees have headsets that they use. So it's it's a voice picking system. Um, basically, they they scan their batch that they're going to pick with their little they call it potato. <laughs> so you handheld scan it. And then you just follow the voice prompts. It tells you what location to walk to. It tells you how many to pick. You can ask if um, you can ask it for quantities or different various pack sizes. So you may have uh, the, the biggest the, the biggest challenge for us is is people understanding um, how pack sizes work because they can get very confusing. Um, so that that's probably the biggest challenge. But everything else, it, we walk you through it step by step. Um, as far as having previous warehouse experience, it's nice to have, but not necessary. Um, the way I look at it, our process should be simple enough that we can bring somebody in who can follow instructions and, and can learn pretty quickly within a week or two, understand the process and be able to, to work at a, at, a, at a pretty efficient rate. That's interesting. And then I said, do they have a piece of paper, which is funny because <laughs> they you guys have such a robust system. Um, so we have a question in the chat here. What would the qualifications be for someone interested in the distribution or logistics side of the company? And potentially what would be the salary range for someone in that position be? Yeah, I think uh, so as far as experience to have, um, I guess, uh, an associate's degree or have, have a degree is, is a plus, uh, depending on the level of position you're applying for. So um, for our, for our, receiving coordinator and shipping coordinator that, that sit here in the facility, they, they don't, there's no degree required for those positions. Um, basically, it's just the interview process. You talk about your understanding and, and what you know about logistics. That's that's really what we're looking for in those positions is somebody who, who has some experience or understands uh, the basic concepts of logistics. Um, SAP experience is a plus. Um, so that that's a, that's one that for some of these positions, it's it's more of a requirement, but not, or no, I'm sorry, not a requirement. It's preferred, but not a required. So a lot of the positions, we can still train those things, but it's it's a benefit if you have that background. Um, salary range for uh, our warehouse team right now is about 50,000 a year. And you saw the, the hourly rate between 50, 40 and 50. Um, it tops out around 70,000 a year. Um, so, I mean, pretty good pay rate for, uh, warehouse work. Um, and then going into those logistics, actually like supply chain logistics, those 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 positions vary in rate from, you know, an entry level position might be 50 to 60,000. And as you progress, you can, you know, you can make all the way up depending on the pay grade, pay bands that you go through. Um, that it, it's, there's specific cutoffs in each of those. So I, I don't know all those pay grades right off the top of my head, but I, I know it probably in the 50 to 60 range is where it would start. Do you have um, employees that start in the distribution center piece of it and then move into different roles? Um, or um, does, does having that experience help them if they wanna move on in, in the company, whether it's staying here locally or, or moving on? Yep, absolutely. So um, my own personal experience, I started as the receiving supervisor and over the past four years, I've moved up a couple different positions. So I went from receiving supervisor to our strategic supervisor to the distribution center manager. That's that's pretty fast progression, but I, really what it comes down to is <clears throat> your willingness to to relocate is, is a big piece of that. So there's there's almost always opportunity somewhere. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the feedback I give this team. It's tough right here to, to move up. You know, there, there's only so many positions um, in this area, but the opportunity to grow and develop is is vast. So, I mean, if, if you're if you're willing to relocate to another position or to another location um, within the U.S., you can you can progress pretty quickly. Um, and I mean, even if if you're willing to go overseas, those opportunities are there too. That's great. Um, when you talked a little bit about the supply chain management side of things and being able to to get parts in when you need them. Um, are you seeing that um, 
that's been an issue for you? Or do you feel like um, you pretty much have a lot of the parts in stock? And then what happens if you don't? Um, how do you uh, go about that? And then do you typically have like a timeline of when you would get a part in to be able to tell um, the other side of like, hey, we don't have it in stock right now, but um, potentially within the next week or so? Yeah, that that's a huge challenge for us right now. And I think it's across all industries. Um, just supply chain in general is, is really, it's, it's, um, it's hard to predict. Um, typically, we'll, we'll, so right now we're at about 80% of where we should be from an inventory standpoint, which is not good. Normally, I guess before the pandemic, we, we would stay around 96 to 97%, um, which meant back orders would be low and that people are getting the parts that they need. Um, our goal is to ship as much as we can on our dealership network route, the dedicated DDS route, we call it. That's those 12 routes that ship because it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's more predictable and it ensures that the customer is going to get their parts in a timely manner. <clears throat> with, with what you were talking about, that kind of um, choppiness of the inflow of product, um, if, if a distribution center stocks parts, if once those come in, we receive them. Um, once the system shows they're in stock, they will automatically refer out to everybody that has an order, as many as we can fulfill. So we'll 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 ship orders from here uh, to Florida and to Texas and and California on a regular basis. We ship all over the country from here, um, and that's just based on avail availability. We've seen that go up quite a bit. I'd say thirty to forty percent over the last two years, year and a half, two years. So with your distribution center, um, and then you mentioned that there's some other kind of in the Midwest too, do each of you kind of have certain parts that you're in charge of, or do you have like every single part? Does that, yeah. <laughs> does, that does that make sense? Yeah. So we do have stocking plans for each of the distribution centers. Um, we have a total of 10 throughout the network. Um, so we have all the way from New Jersey um, to Reno, Nevada. Yeah, there's there's distribution centers across the country, 10 total. And we have our geographic footprint, like I said, that 500 mile radius around Des Moines. Uh, we have another that's in Indianapolis. So those that we try to get them to overlap or get as close to overlapping as possible. Um, <clears throat> but as far as the um, fulfilling of orders, it, it really is kind of a first come first serve with these back orders that we have right now, which we're, again, we're at an all time high for back orders that are, um, that we track throughout the year. Yeah. I just didn't know if you potentially didn't have one at your distribution center, if you could potentially call one of your sister facilities and see if they have it in stock, but I'm assuming your, um, your processes probably check to see if there's any in stock anywhere else. So yep. Um, yep. that's they great. Call it referral matrix. Yep. So that's, that's, it's, it's our uh, warehouse management system. It does look at all the different distribution centers in the network. It also looks at transit time. So if you have a place that is, if you have a facing dealership as we call it. So anyone in my 500 miles circle, if, if our system shows that that part is in transit to me, it won't refer it to a different yeah. facility because we can fulfill it a little bit quicker if it gets here in a day or two days. Sure. So how many um, distribution like warehouse employees do you have on each shift, would you say? And can you talk a little bit, since you're the site manager, a little bit about um, depending on how many employees you have on each shift. And obviously it sounds like they kind of have their deal. They have a headset on, they're kind of working. And, but can you talk a little bit about the company culture within your Grimes facility and how many employees you have um, on at each time and, um, you know, shift change, what that looks like. And um, just a little bit more about the ins and outs of, of that. Sure. Yeah. So our, I, I mentioned our first shift starts at 530. Um, so they're, they're in early, but that's kind of the, the shift that does most of the receiving. So that's the inbound trucks that are coming in. We're receiving those, uh, taking parts off the trucks, making sure that they're the right quantity, right, um, right part. And we're getting those put away so they can, as they get put away, orders can continue to roll in for those parts. So that, that shift has about 10 people on it. Um, and, you know, so that runs from at 5, 5.30 until 1.30 to 2 o'clock, kind of depending on what the volume is for that, that given day or week. 
Uh, the midshift team is about the same, about 10 people. Um, that, that group is more responsible for the, those shipments that, that I talked about that are going to multiple places all the way around the world. So anything that is less than truckload, they're handling that. Um, they also take care of our um, expedited loads and our expedited shipments, excuse me. So orders that are getting shipped UPS all over the US, that, that team is responsible for those. So it's UPS or FedEx small parcel. Um, and that shift runs 8.30 uh, from 8.30 AM till 5.30, six o'clock, kind of depending on the volume again. Um, so there is some overlap there with those two shifts. Uh, generally, the first shift is leaving at about 1.30, um, between 1.30 and 2. That's about the time second shift comes in. Just with equipment, it makes sense uh, to not have that many people in the building. We just, it, there's, there's not enough room for that many people to work. That, that's our largest shift. Um, it has about 18 people on it. So none of, none of the shifts are huge. Uh, we only have about 50 people total in the building. Um, and the, the idea is to try to be as efficient as possible. Um, and get those parts picked. But the second shift group is is really focused just on our dealership network, those 12 routes that are getting shipped out every night. No, oh, that makes sense. Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, so we'll wrap up here. But Todd, can you just talk a little bit about how you kind of got into this industry um, when, when you were a little kid? Is this something that you always dreamed of doing? And um, just kind of talk about how you, how you landed um, where you are today. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, um, I would never have guessed that I'd be in a position like this. <laughs> this, this wasn't, it wasn't like a childhood dream by, by any stretch. Um, actually, um, I joined the military in uh, the late nineties and was in the army for a while there. Um, I'd love to say I was a, a patriot through and through, but I went for college tuition reimbursement because <laughs> the, there just wasn't great jobs out there when I, when I got out, um, I got out of college, but um, so I did that, and and actually, when I transitioned out of the army in 2005, my first interview was with Target Distribution Center in Cedar Falls. Um, so I, I caught on there and kind of got introduced to distribution and um, kind of the behind the scenes that 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 you don't normally see how, how the parts get from one location to the next, and I just really enjoyed it. Um, so I started with Target in 2005 and. Um, from there, I went over to a company, it's a smaller local company, Van Meter Electric, um, and I was a distribution center manager there for about eight years. Um, just in, in, in really, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a unique industry, a unique position because, yeah, it's, it's just boxes, but there's so much, there's so much that goes into how those boxes move and, and how they get from place A to place B. And I, you know, being able to work with the team, I, I get to interact with the team every single day. That That's the part that I probably enjoy the most is that, you know, when we, when we have an issue, we work through it together. Um, I, I really enjoy that problem solving and, you know, engaging the team to try and see if, what they can do from a creative standpoint to solve the issues. Um, that that's, that's probably the thing about Daimler. I like the most, um, so having come on with Daimler in, in 2017, um, they really embrace fail the, the, the concept of fail fast. So you can make mistakes, but you need to learn from them. And if you do, when you learn from them and get better based on what you what your uh, your team is doing, um, that's success. You know, that that that's that's how you're successful is. is you know, it's one thing for me to come up with a bunch of great ideas, but it's a whole nother thing if the team's coming up with the ideas themselves. You know, that, that's where we really, I think, separate ourselves too. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it just sounds like a very organized and efficient uh, behind the scenes kind of. I think a lot of times um, students that are looking for something that's fast paced and really need to be organized and efficient, but maybe not somebody that has to talk to a bunch of people all the time besides your crew and your, and your supervisor, but um, very important, you know, of, of a, a position. So um, thank you so much for being here today, Todd, and, and uh, teaching us a little bit more about Daimler Truck. And for those of you who logged in, I appreciate you um, as well for being here. So um, we uh, will wrap up this business spotlight event with Daimler Truck, and we hope you all have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.